Are you stinky? Just covered in filth after a hard day at work? Have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you hate modern day plumbing and waterfall shower heads? Do you just happen to live in the Roman Empire? Then I have the perfect bathing facility for you. The Baths of Constantine. Chances are you probably don't remember who Constantine was, so just as a refresher, Constantine was most noted for his legalization of Christianity, which let people love Jesus legally, and overall made Christianity the state religion. Constantine also renamed Byzantium Constantinople after himself after he defeated his colleague Licinius after some casual civil warring that was going on. Even though the both co-wrote the Edict of Milan in 313 AD, which let the government tolerate the existence of Christians so they would stop being prosecuted and thrown into the lions for sport. Also, keep in mind going forward that I'm going to be talking about the time periods after Diocletian split the Empire of Roman half into East and West. Before we talk about the locations and history of the bathhouse, we should know how they worked. The bathhouses after the second century used a hypocaust system. The hypocaust itself is a furnace underneath the floor, and the heated gases from the furnace would be circulated in a two-foot space from the floor using chimneys and pipes, and the floor would be suspended up on pillars. The Romans later figured out they could circulate the gas in the walls so they could put windows in the baths. The windows allowed them to control the temperature in the bath to make it as comfortable as possible. The rooms in the bathhouses were the apoditarium, the changing room, the palestra, the exercise room, the frigidarium, the cold water pool, the tepidarium, the warm room, the caldarium, hot water pool, and sauna. The baths would be divided into male and female and would operate at different times to manage the furnace better. You would think that the Bath of Constantine would be in the city named after him, and you'd be right, but the guy loved his bath so much that there are three different baths named after him. But strangely, I couldn't find any source about the one in Constantinople besides one bath called the Bath of Zeuxiphus, which was built in 100 to 200 AD and was built upon a temple of Zeus and was founded by Septimus Severus and was decorated under Constantine, but I have no idea if they are the same building or not. Luckily, you can get yourself clean if you move to the west to Rome, where another bath of Constantine sits on Quirinal Hill, which is one of the seven hills of Rome. This was the last of the great baths of Rome, being sponsored by Constantine and constructed in 315 AD. It was built upon the ruins of houses and face the north and south in order to have the sun aid in heating the building. For a bathhouse, it was small, and it drew off the largest aqueduct, the Aquae Marquia. The facility was damaged after being sacked by Alderic I of the Visigoths in 410, and was restored by a city prefect, Petronius Perpina Magnus Qua Quad Quad Quadrat. Ianus, yes. However, in the first half of the 6th century, the gods sacked Rome again and sabotaged the aqueducts, leaving the bathhouse non-functional, dooming the people to be filthy and unhygienic. The building was then used as free building material, but this one Italian family, the Archiani family, in the 13th century incorporated the remains of the bathhouse into a stronghold. But by the 16th century, however, the bathhouse was re-ruined and historians just note it as an ancient Roman ruins with odd modern additions. If for some reason you don't live in ancient Rome and seek archaic methods of hygiene, we travel to the west-west of the Roman Empire. The Bath of Constantinople in Arles, France is still there today. It was built around the same time as the Bath in Rome, and used to be 40,000 square feet, but only a third of it still stands today. Now that we actually have a bathhouse to bathe in, that is pretend bathe because the water system is broken, what would you do? Well, the ladies would bathe before the men, and they would dry sweat, which is like sweating in a hot sauna. Then they would splash hot water on themselves, then would lather scented olive oils, which would be a substitute for soap. And scrape the oil and grime off with a strigil, which is a curved metal blade. 
After all the oil was gone, they would enter a cool pool to wash off for a final time, and then get a massage as a cherry on top. The baths would usually be free or be a small fee. And after doing all this research, it made the idea of a state-sponsored bathhouse seem super nice, but then again, it would probably be a really raunchy Alabama rest stop instead.